Hello, everyone. This is Kat. Welcome back to My Hero Academia Podfix. Today, I'll be reading a heavily requested fic entitled Paper Agency. Here's the summary. Brand new UA graduate Shinzo Hitoshi has a lot on his plate between finding a job, looking for a place to live, figuring out what his relationship with his mentors is going to look like now that they're not teacher and student anymore, and why his civilian boyfriend, Izuku, is acting so damn weird. Now, this is technically a one-shot, because it's, well, classified as one. However, it's almost 50,000 words, so it is going to take a couple parts to this, but I'll get through as much as I can for this first section. I hope you guys enjoy. Hitoshi's graduation day was bright and cold. Cherry blossom season had come early, and he couldn't have asked for better conditions for commemorative photos. Most of the UA students were dressed in their uniforms, with the exception of the heroics department, who stood in the grand assembly wearing the final version of their hero costumes, perfected over the course of three years of instruction and experimentations. Hitoshi's costume still contained a nod to his mentor, a racer head, but he had refined it over time, adding sleek body armor with violet accents that matched his voice modulator and his own set of capture scarves that were in matte charcoal gray rather than Aizawa's brilliant white. Hatsume had added a polarized screen to cover his eyes when they realized the pale band of his face over his mask was just as noticeable as in the dark as white scarves. Hatsume, being Hatsume, had gone ten steps further and added an integrated computer and communications to his armor. She'd also turned the screen into a heads-up display. The suit itself had a passive espionage suite that he was taking full advantage of in order to get the seamless footage of the entire ceremony. He got it all, every speech and presentation— at the end, he felt dizzy with the impact of his success as he held onto his diploma in one hand and his upgraded license in the other. He was a pro hero. Congratulations! Present Mike swept him up in a hug as soon as Hitoshi cleared out of the auditorium. We're so proud of you. Hitoshi's mask hid his silly grin, but Mike was a veteran hero and knew to look at his eyes for the telltale crinkle. Thanks. He said softly and looked over Mike's shoulder just in time to see Eraserhead's more sedated approach. His mentor looked softer than he had, ever, with a persistent little smile clinging to the edges of his mouth. Hitoshi had the privilege of knowing that Aizawa was always a little fond and wistful during the UA graduation ceremony, as he sent another class of new heroes out into the world. This year would be the first in a while that he had an intact homeroom class graduate, but Hitoshi wanted to believe that smile was all for him. Maybe it was. After all, he was the one who got to see it. Aizawa had kept his mouth hidden behind his scarves for the ceremony and hadn't emerged anywhere a student could get their feelings on him until that moment. Aizawa offered his hand for a shake, which Hitoshi had accepted with the same gravity. You did good. His voice was quiet but sincere. I'm honored to have been your teacher. This was too much, and even Hitoshi's calcified heart started to melt a bit. I couldn't have done it without you, he confessed. I was determined, but I didn't. His voice failed on him. Thank you. He tried again and bowed low. I'm so grateful to have been your student. The gravity of the moment shattered when Mike's phone made a loud shuddering noise. It made another when both Hitoshi and Aizawa turned their heads to glare at him at the same time. Okay, Mike cheered and pumped his fist in the air. Now for a group selfie, under the cherry blossoms, and then we're going to get pictures in front of the ceremony sign. A little message alert had appeared in the corner of his HUD forwarded over from his phone, but Hitoshi had pushed notifications off for the ceremony. However, he could still see the sender's identity, and the message was from his mother. Might as well rip off the bandage, he thought, and blinked at the icon to open the message while Mike had hauled them both off for photographs. It was pretty much what he'd been expecting, and he blinked twice to dismiss it without answering. Mike wasn't satisfied with just the group selfie and the traditional picture in front of UA's flower-trimmed graduation ceremony sign. He also wanted a picture of Hitoshi and Aizawa, with UA's building in the distance. He had to lay on the floor to get the angle he wanted, but dignity did not often stand between Yamada Hizashi and a good picture. Then Uraraka found him, and hauled him away for more pictures with the nerdier side of Class 3A, which Mike also volunteered to take. He took more photos of Hitoshi with Monoma, Kendo, and the other friends he'd made in 3B. He came away from the ceremony with enough pictures to publish a photo book and no reassurances that Mike wasn't planning to do just that. He left campus walking companionably between his two former teachers. They had all changed into civilian drag, and Hitoshi carried his suit in a discreet duffel, a far cry from the distinctive school-issued briefcases they'd been required to use before. 
We should go somewhere to celebrate, Mike decided out loud as they walked. I'm thinking sushi. Ooh. Yes, I saw a place advertising uni crescent. Now that's a special occasion food. Are your parents expecting you tonight? Aizawa's tone was deceptively mild. He knew that was a loaded question and had likely anticipated the answer he was about to get. No, Hitoshi sighed. He might as well get it over with. I got a text from my mom after the ceremony. Congratulations and a reminder that I need to have my stuff out of the house by Friday. Ah, Aizawa's shoulders lifted up just enough that his off-duty scarf had hid his unhappy grimace. Hitoshi's parents' behavior wasn't really a shock to anyone by this point, but his teachers always seemed to hope for a reconciliation. Hitoshi could have told them that they were just setting themselves up for disappointment, but that level of pessimism from a teenager just upset them more, so he kept it to himself. You'll come stay with us in that case, Aizawa said, instead of any number of other justified things. Do you have much stuff left over there? Mike asked. The fact of the matter was that Hitoshi had not lived at home, since shortly before Yue had opened the dormitories, he hadn't even gone home for breaks. Mike and Aizawa were more than his teachers. They'd given him a room in their home, and it was there whenever he needed it, which had been most nights when he couldn't stay at school or with his boyfriend. Not a lot, I don't think. Hitoshi thought about it, but drew a blank. His parents wouldn't throw anything out until after the Friday deadline. They were fair in their own bloodless way. Izu would know. Hitoshi realized and got his phone out to shoot him a quick text. Izuku hadn't been able to attend Hitoshi's graduation ceremony, although they'd both wanted him to be there. Unfortunately, Izuku didn't get to choose his hours and had to jump when work came available, although not for much longer if Hitoshi got his way. As much as he wanted to stay with Mike and Aizawa to explore what their little found family would look like without the barrier of school in the way, he also wanted to make it so that his boyfriend of two years didn't have to work every single hour of the day to make ends meet. Let's drop your suit off at the house and then we can go get some food, Aizawa suggested. Is there anyone you'd like to invite? No one who's available yet. Someone might join later. Hitoshi sighed. Izuku had said that he was going to try and get out in time to do dinner or maybe go dancing, but he hadn't known how long his gig was going to run. That was par for the course when you had ten million shitty part-time gigs. Maybe once Hitoshi was making money, they could cut him down to one or two less shitty part-time jobs and tell the rest of his bosses to go to hell. Ideally, he'd like Izuku to find one good full-time job, but that wasn't really achievable for a quirkless teenager with no high school diploma. Someone, huh? Mike grinned, and he wiggled his eyebrows. Hitoshi's ears went hot as he hunkered in on himself, which was the most incriminating response imaginable. Fortunately, Mike wasn't mean, and they were almost to the house since Mike and Aizawa lived so close to campus. Well, I hope that they get free in time to catch up with us then. He clapped Hitoshi on the back and went ahead to unlock the door. Aizawa waited until Mike was just out of range. I hope you know that you can introduce us to anyone you're seeing, he said, voice pitched low. If you're at that point, he added. Hitoshi tried to play it cool, but his voice cracked when he replied. I, yeah, we are. I want you guys to meet him. If he was at all surprised by the him, Aizawa didn't let on, even though they'd never really had cause to discuss Hitoshi's personal preferences. He'd have to be a hypocrite to be upset over that, considering the fact that he'd been with Mike since they were teens. Hitoshi was more than ready to introduce Izuku to his fa- no, to Mike and Aizawa. The problem was that he wasn't sure if he was ready to introduce them to Izuku. Quirkless people hadn't really been on Hitoshi's radar until the first time Izuku had to change addresses because his landlord found out that he was one. Since then, he'd been there to see his boyfriend lose at least two of his ten million jobs and several casual friends for the same reason. Hitoshi had learned the hard way, as a kid, that prejudice didn't have just one face, and sometimes it belonged to someone you trusted. His teachers didn't hate Hitoshi for a quirk that he hadn't chosen, but that didn't mean that they couldn't surprise him over his lover's lack of one, and Hitoshi just hadn't been brave enough to find out. Aizawa and Mike were under the impression that Hitoshi spent a lot of more of his breaks with his biological parents than he really did. If he wasn't in the dorms or in the room at Yamada and Aizawa residence, then he was at Izuku's tiny studio. Hitoshi trotted upstairs to the little bedroom that he'd called home for almost every long break in summer since he turned sixteen. Most of his worldly belongings really were there already, and his framed and signed band posters, his achievement certificates, his cork board of pictures, all his clothes, his training gear, and his small collection of ultra-rare, limited-edition present Mike merch 
courtesy of the man himself. What else did he need? As if summoned, his phone pinged with the Zuku's custom notification, All Might's voice saying, I am here. It was a response to his question. Real quick, because I'm on break, make sure to get your national insurance card if you didn't have it already. Hitoshi smacked himself in the face. Obvious. He did not have it since he had UA's campus clinic to go to when he was sick, but not every agency had an on-site medic or let their staff come in for normal preventative care or emergent health situations. Plus, he didn't have a job yet, so he needed to be able to go to the free public clinics until he had one or some more private options. His phone lit up with another text. Also, baby pictures. Anything you want to keep that was yours, like a stuffed animal or a baby blanket? Hitoshi sat down on his bed. Ah, Izu he muttered, and he covered his mouth as he wrestled with his inconvenient feelings. It was nice, on the one hand, to have someone who knew what he was going through. On the other, it meant that someone he cared for had to go through it, too. Everything okay in there? Mike stuck his head in the door and frowned when he looked over at Hitoshi's face. Yeah, just got some good advice about the home situation, and I kind of hate the fact that he knows what to do. Hitoshi rubbed his face. Let me change. Yeah? Mike leaned against the doorframe. Your friend. Is he okay? That tone was not Yamada, vaguely goofy parental figure that was present Mike, concerned teacher and pro hero. The two were very different in terms of intensity. Yeah, he's okay now, Hitoshi admitted, although he did not have all the details. Izuku rarely had the chill necessary to discuss his estranged mother, although he had tried on more than one occasion. What few details Hitoshi had painted a very complicated picture— Izuku hadn't gone to high school. He hadn't gotten to, for one, and Hitoshi was pretty sure there had been a brief period of homelessness in there as well, although Izuku went to great lengths to talk around it. He went through something similar a few years ago, is all. Sorry to hear that. Mike was sincere. You sure he can't join us? No, he's working. He said he was on break just now, so it might be another few hours until they turn him loose. Hitoshi dug through his closet, as he explained, looking for something nice enough to wear out with his teachers that was also attractive enough to lure his significant other out on a late-night date, and maybe more. He held up a shirt for Mike's inspection. Yeah or nah? Mike considered it. For being seen with some old people or impressing a young man, he asked. Why can't it be both? Hitoshi's ears were hot again, and Mike laughed at him while shouldering him out of the way. You can do better than that. Where are those black jeans? Mike frequently knew of the contents of everyone's closets better than they themselves did. He picked out a pair of artistically slash dark jeans that he'd gotten as seasonal remainders from Best Genus Fashion House the year before, a slouchy zip from a shirt and a long black jacket. Try those with your foldover boots and that vertical bar necklace that Nemu gave you. Hitoshi squinted at the shirt and jacket. Then he looked over at Mike. Did I always have these? Eh, I got some more samples the other day, and they were your size. Mike waved a flippant hand like people just gave him designer clothes all the time, which they did, but not in Hitoshi's size. What had likely happened in reality was more like Mike went shopping, got carried away, and came home with clothes for more than just himself. He'd given up on dressing Aizawa in anything other than black v-necks and slacks, and had moved on to Hitoshi as a softer target. He didn't often say no to free clothes, but it was a little unnerving when they just showed up in his closet and Mike pretended they'd been there the whole time. Mike stood in the hall while Hitoshi changed and stuck his head back in when invited. Leave the top zipped while we're in the restaurant. He made a thoughtful tut noise and he winked. Unzip it a little before you see your boy, so it frames the necklace. Hitoshi tried it out and, huh, the guy in the mirror looked, well, like Hitoshi, only a little better, more accessible. The unzipped shirt showed a little subtle V of his skin that took the whole effect from a G rating to a I would like to take our relationship to the next stage, which was what Hitoshi tentatively hoped would happen later that evening. He zipped the shirt back up fast before he could start thinking about it. Aizawa gave him a surprise once over when Mike and Hitoshi joined him downstairs, but did not comment and Hitoshi was grateful because he would have died. They walked to the restaurant, which was a small, semi-open air bar not too far from the house. They took seats at the bar, and Mike did the ordering. Hitoshi ended up with tea, while Mike and Aizawa shared a hot sake. "'In a few years, you'll be drinking with us,' Mike predicted. "'Maybe. Hitoshi didn't expect that he'd suddenly start liking alcohol in the next year or so, but weirder things have happened. "'Or maybe I'll keep being your sober friend. Someone has to take pictures when you do dumb stuff.' 
As was usual, Aizawa changed the subject from drinking with brutal serenity. How's the job hunt going? They both ignored Mike's complaint of, Ah, oh, Shota, so boring. I have some interviews scheduled, Hitoshi admitted. I have one recruitment offer, but I haven't met with the supervising hero yet. Oh, yeah? Mike perked up. Guess they weren't that boring. With who? The agency's called Watchtower. Hitoshi didn't know much about them, as they were small and newish. Watchtower? Aizawa frowned and got out his phone to check the hero net. He found what he was looking for fairly fast and made an unimpressed face at his phone. They're a paper agency, no? They sound familiar, though. Mike crossed his arms and rocked from side to side on his stool as he thought about it. Oh, yeah, they broke into that Musutafu Top 50 this year, and it's only been a few years since they opened. That explains why they're recruiting. What's a paper agency? Hitoshi was pretty sure that he would have remembered the term had he heard it before. Oh, they don't have a physical office. Mike made a sketchy gesture. Usually paper agencies belong to, like, lower-ranked heroes who don't have much financial backing, people trying to avoid startup debt, basically. Sometimes there are shadow departments of established agencies, intelligent and recon, stuff like that. Hitoshi got his phone out to review his recruitment offer. Uh, there's a physical address on my invitation. It was in a pretty rough area of town, which he did not mention. He hadn't gone into heroics to be safe, but Mike and I saw will be more worried about the trajectory of the career. Well, if they're doing well, they might have gotten a grant to establish a patrolling territory. The mayor does that sometimes to encourage new talent and stabilize parts of the city. That'll usually include budget for facilities. That way, even if the agency goes under, there's a building that they can slot a new team into right away. Mike shrugged. Are they looking for sidekicks? I think so, but I was offered a junior combatant role. Hitoshi tucked the memory of Mike's low, impressed whistle, and I saw his brief, impressed nod away for later. The recruiting officer said he'd explain more in person. That's not bad, show. Mike murmured to Aizawa. Watchtower has been getting some good media coverage, too. Now that I'm thinking about it, they were all the ones partnered with Selkie's agency in that big smuggling sting operation last April. It'll depend on how much media coverage you want. Aizawa acknowledged Mike with a nod. You're wanting to stay semi-underground still, yes? I have to. Hitoshi wanted to preserve the advantage of his quirk for as long as possible. Stealth and intelligence agencies didn't often recruit out of high schools, so unless they were hiring people like Mirio Senpai, who was a prodigy of the agency's lead hero. Unlike some heroes, he'd probably not be able to stay at one agency his whole career either. Keep in mind that when you talk to the recruiter and remember what we told you about starting wages for new heroes, a junior combatant makes twice what a patrolling sidekick can expect. Don't let them lowball you. Hitoshi laughed. Oh, so you like them now? Starting out as a JC looks good on paper, Aizawa admitted. Just make sure to meet everyone and get a feel for them before you make any decisions. Who's your recruiting hero? Red Tower. Hitoshi blinked at the sudden frigid expression and appalled disgust on his mentor's face. He looked around to make sure Miss Joke hadn't just walked into the restaurant. What? Mike burst out laughing. Not all heroes get along. He snorted and reached over to pat Aizawa on the back. Red Tower is a former vigilante who went underground pro. No one ever officially caught him, so there was nothing to stop him. I'm not surprised that he went mainstream. He's got a flashy quirk and a lot of experience, though he is a bit old for it. Takes a while to really establish an agency. I wonder if he's slowing down. That jackass? Aizawa grumbled. Never. Should I be worried? Hitoshi did not want to have to be worried. Nah, Mike waves the question off. Tower's unorthodox is all. So he's the founding hero of Watchtower? He shook his head. There's two... Red Tower and Watchmen, but I haven't spoken to them. Watchmen? I don't know that name. Must be the quiet type. Mike poked around on his phone, presumably on the hero net. Might be good for you, though, if they're used to letting Tower draw all the media fire while others work in the background. It's a good way to get started as long as the agency accurately reports your takedowns. Hitoshi's back pocket announced, I am here, and he hurried to check it. Sure enough, it was Azuku. I got free. Do you still want to meet up? He wet his lips and looked over at Mike and Aizawa. They hadn't even ordered their food yet, just drinks. I'm with Mike and Aizawa. Do you want to meet them? Izuku took a while to answer, but when he did... Yes. Yes, I want to. Hitoshi felt his whole body relax in relief. If Izuku wanted to come, then it wouldn't be bad, right? Then, in typical Izuku fashion, the fretting started up. Is it fancy? Oh my god, I'm just in my normal clothes. It's to your graduation party, of course it's fancy. Should I change? I can change right now.
Hitoshi told them they were at a snack bar, so casual was fine. Shared his location and got a smiley face back in response, with Izuku's ETA. He blinked at the estimate. They'd gotten lucky, and his gig had been nearby, or Izuku had already had been headed towards the bar district near UA when he texted. Hey, uh... Hitoshi's face started to heat up again when he realized both his teachers were watching him with expectation. My friend, he got free, and, um... I asked him to join us, if that's okay. Inwardly, he groaned. Very smooth, Satoshi. Good job. Mike broke out in a grin. Do I get to ask questions now? He pleaded. Because I've been very, very good for an entire hour, and it might actually be killing me. I, uh, yeah. Ask away. Hitoshi fiddled with the zip on his shirt. He hadn't been this nervous in the time that Izuku had met his actual parents. Granted, those circumstances had been very different. So what's his name? I saw a stole march on Mike, who clutched his heart and went off about foul betrayal. How did you two meet? Midori Izuku. Itoshi didn't really want to explain how they got together, because they'd met in the uncomfortable window between Itoshi having a place with them and the point where he could just not spend another minute locked in a house with his parents without somebody getting hurt. He tried to sleep on a park bench once, only to get nearly mugged. The only reason he didn't was because Izuku's route took him home, past the park, where Itoshi had tried to spend the night. He heard the noise and clobbered one of the guys with his loaded backpack. The muggers ran off, and Izuku had offered to take Itoshi to an all-night diner. He bought him both melon floats, and Izuku had stayed to talk until Itoshi was calm again. We both met in Bespin Park, and got to talking. Izuku's a huge quirk nerd, and offered to help me workshop ideas for my second year support gear. Then we, uh, kept talking. Hitoshi rubbed the back of his neck, embarrassed just to think about the excuses he'd come up with to keep their conversations going until Izuku got brave and asked if he wanted to go out rather than just hang out. It wasn't until they'd been together for a while that Hitoshi realized just how hard Izuku had to work to carve out time that they'd been spending together. No one had ever done that. Prioritized Hitoshi over his own needs, and not because he felt obligated to, but because he wanted to. That was when Hitoshi had realized just how much trouble he was in, the forever kind of trouble. When was that? Mike elbowed his partner before Aizawa could interrupt him. How long have you two been together? Itoshi thought about it. It was the summer before second year, so it'll be two years soon. That sat Mike back. Really? He blanked and seemed almost hurt, maybe? We're only hearing about it now. Oh, he was definitely hurt. He flinched when Aizawa elbowed him right back with a frown. Ah, Itoshi considered his former teachers. They... Didn't really have an easily labeled relationship now that school was over for him, although, from something his mother had once said, Hitoshi suspected that Aizawa had once tried to forcibly take full custody of him away from his parents. It hadn't worked, but his parents also had never asked where he was living if not with them. There was a good chance they didn't care so long as he kept up with school, and Hitoshi had never wanted to find out for sure. Mike and Aizawa were better guardians than his genetic donors. They never lied to him or made him feel unwanted. They deserved being given the benefit of the doubt. Izu is... Look, I'm going to ask now before he gets here so we're on the same page. Do you have any problems with quirkless people? Their response was gratifying, and the genuine immediateness of it. Ah, Aizawa echoed him, but more in a grave tone of understanding. No, we don't. Ah, oh, no, kiddo, no, Mike hastened to add. Were you worried? I wasn't worried, Hitoshi fought valiantly to keep his shoulders from hunching up all in the lie and only really sort of succeeded. Not really. No, I get it. Mike reached over to squeeze Hitoshi's shoulder. People can surprise you. Is he okay talking about it or do we leave quirks out of the conversation? Oh no, he loves talking about quirks. Hitoshi huffed a short laugh just thinking about it. He thinks everyone is wonderful and amazing. He'll say it to your face, too. I introduced him to some of the 1B kids once, and now I'm pretty sure Monoma would kill for him. It's Izu's superpower. Everyone who went into heroics was just a little starved for attention, some more than others, and Izuku's brand of starry-eyed rapture upon hearing about a new quirk and all its potential applications was the purest drug that Hitoshi could imagine. It didn't work on everyone, obviously, or Izu's life would have been a lot easier. Monoma, though, he didn't make friends easily. He and Hitoshi had sort of fallen into friendship because they were both the same kind of asshole. And Hitoshi had smarted off to the 1A kids before getting slotted into their class, but 
Izuku had had the benefit of not being a threat, the way their classmates were, so he hadn't had to work around the barrier of Monoma's knee-jerk posturing. Uh, Toshi, is that you? Hitoshi turned around just in time to see the boy in question, silhouetted against the setting sun as he ducked under the norin, and Izuku wasn't dressed nearly as casually as he implied. Hitoshi had seen what Izuku considered street clothes. He had on a plain navy polo shirt, a messenger bag, his compression sleeve, and cargo pants. Not a hint of hero merch anywhere. Hitoshi patted the open stool next to him. We're here. What do you want to drink? Izuku beamed and slipped an arm around Hitoshi's waist as he sat down. Congratulations on graduating. He gave Hitoshi a squeeze that Hitoshi returned and added to the man behind the grill who was waiting with a pad of paper. Uh, tea, please. These are my teachers. Hitoshi leaned back so Izuku could see the men in question. Aizawa Shoda and Yamada Hizashi. Midori Izuku. He bobbed a little, seated bow, which the older men returned. I'm really glad to meet you. Hitoshi talks about you all the time. It was the exact right thing to say. Mike beamed. Even Aizawa softened a bit. You can call me Mike, Mike pointed out at the menu board. Well, get whatever you like. It's our treat tonight. Oh, thank you. Izuku nudged Hitoshi with his shoulder. How was the ceremony? I want to hear everything. Did the hero department wear their costumes? Who gave the speeches? Did Nato cry? I took a video on my body cam. We can watch it later when I download it from Hatsume's server. Be patient. I got you Monoma ugly crying from the whole thing during Principal Nezu's speech in high definition. Hitoshi squeezed Izuku's shoulders when he puffed his cheeks in a theatrical pout. He wasn't expecting the soft noise of pain he got in response. Izuku realized he'd fucked up, almost at once, and he tried to pull up the collar of his shirt. Uh, Toshi, no. Too late, Hitoshi had spotted the top edge of a new bruise peeking out of the collar of his boyfriend's shirt, and he frowned. He tugged Izuku's shirt gently and away from his neck. Izu, is that a boot print? Izuku sighed, slumping in defeat. There was an accident at my morning job, he admitted, and let Hitoshi position him so that he could get a better look at the injury. I went to a clinic after. It's just ugly. You know how I bruise easy. Accident my ass. Hitoshi forgot they were in front of other people and pushed Izuku's bangs back. If he got kicked in the back, then he probably fell forward. Sure enough, he had a matching cut on his forehead under a bandage that was hidden by his fluffy hair. You were at the construction company this morning. Was it the architect on site again? No comment, Izuku muttered, which meant he had been. Do you need some ice, sir? The chef had been studiously ignoring their conversation until Hitoshi uncovered the top edge of the nasty bruise. Yes, please, Mike spoke up. Could we get the check, too? No, Izuku gasped. Please, don't break up Hitoshi's party because of this. No one's breaking anything up, Mike assured him. We're just going to move it to our house and order a pile of sushi. You get to ice your shoulder, we get to look at each other while we talk. I didn't really think this one out when we were picking a restaurant. It was subtle, but even Aizawa perked up at the thought of a party tray. Their local sushi bar didn't usually do delivery, but they made an exception for Mike because he was charming, famous, and didn't abuse the privilege. The chef gladly checked them out and was even gladder still when he saw the size of the tip that Mike had left to encourage him to keep his mouth shut if reporters came by later. You know... Hitoshi said as they walked back in the direction of the house. He had his hand tucked into his boyfriend's back pocket and was enjoying the fact that his boyfriend had responded in kind. I'm out of school and unemployed. There's nothing to stop me from following you around all day and punching those bigots that you work with. Izuku, who was much more comfortable once Mike and Aizawa were walking ahead of them, gave him the side eye. I think that you imagine a lot more adversity in my life than there actually is, he said, which was a blatant lie. Also, you're not going to have to be unemployed for more than a few days. You have a non-violent takedown quirk. You'll be drowning a job offer soon. I wish everyone had as much faith in me as you, Hitoshi snorted. I only got one outright recruitment pitch. A bunch of my class graduated with jobs and merchandise deals. You want merch? Izuku asked innocently, despite damn well knowing the answer. Hitoshi shuddered. He'd only recently gotten to the point where he could stand having his picture taken, much less look at it after. Hell no. The additional income would be nice, but detrimental to what he actually wanted to do with his life. Aw, I would wear your merch, Izuku dropped his head on Hitoshi's shoulder, or as near to it as he could get, which was in the area of Hitoshi's upper arm. I'd get everything I saw. You wear everyone's merch. That said, it did give him a little thrill just to think about a siren poster taking up pride of place in Izuku's gallery wall of pro heroes. Maybe he could have one custom-made. That is true, 
as Igor acknowledged. Doesn't mean you aren't special. Here we are, Mike announced, opening up the front gate. Push pause on the flirting, children. Izuku turned bright red, made a sound like air escaping a balloon, as Hitoshi bid a sad farewell to any chance he had of getting lucky that evening, probably for the next several days. That didn't stop him from pulling Izuku down onto his lap once they were inside and assembled around the low living room table. He could rest his chin on the soft cushion of his boyfriend's thick hair. They did something similar in Izuku's tiny apartment while they watched TV with Hitoshi's back up against the side of Izuku's bed, and Izuku leaned back against Hitoshi's chest. Are your parents working tonight, Izuku? Aizawa asked as he wrote down an order. We can order enough for two more if you think they'd like to join us. Hitoshi could have slapped himself, as Izuku stilled in his arms. He caught a glimpse of a panicked Mike, making a panicked X with his arms in his peripheral. Oh, um, no, it's, it's just me. Thank you, Izuku smiled. In retrospect, Hitoshi realized that he probably should have put off the introduction so he could put a little more time in prepping Mike and Aizawa so neither of them ended up with a foot in their mouth, but Izuku had made the right response in the sense that Aizawa respected restraint and decorum in the face of adversity. There was also a good chance that his boyfriend was about to have a razor head poking into every aspect of his life because there was nothing that would get Aizawa's attention like a teen, telling him they were on their own and assuring him they were fine. Hitoshi was grateful that Aizawa had noticed him struggling and judged him worthy of help, but the problem was that you either got all of Eraserhead's help or next to nothing. There had been a few months in there where Hitoshi had spent a lot of time alternating between wishing Aizawa was his real father and also wanting to punch him right in his nosy face. Mike saved the day by asking about the video and watching it put them right back into the party mood. Nato kun is going to murder you if he finds out you have this. Izuku whispered in his ear when they got to the part where Monoma stopped being able to hide his sniffling and accepted a handkerchief from Kendo in order to blow his nose with a glorious extended honk. Worth it, Hitoshi whispered back. Monoma had bigger fish to fry anyway. Hitoshi wasn't the only one who got pictures and was also one of the few people on campus who didn't know Monoma, if not a bad turn, then at least minorly embarrassing one. He's delicate on the inside. Izuku had a hard time keeping his face straight, even as he said that. Oh, Kendo texted me earlier, saying they were getting a get-together done tomorrow for the Heroes Department? That was gra the graduating class? She said that you never replied to her. So she texted his boyfriend and got him in trouble, the snitch. Kendo had something like four younger siblings, five if you counted Monoma, and that meant that she fought dirty when she wanted something. It was awesome until he was her target. I was pretending I didn't see it. Hitoshi grumbled, and he hid his face in Izuku's good shoulder. He knew the party Izuku was talking about. Two of Bakugo's barnacles had found a club that took reservations from minors and were ready to make up three years of intense studying, like no social lives that they had. That place is going to be crawling with paparazzi. Someone's going to end up ruining their career before it gets started. Your classmates are that wild? Izuku gave him a skeptical look. Well, in all honesty, no. UA students tend to be more hyper-ambitious and driven weirdos, but not troublemakers, except for all the times they totally got into trouble. Fortunately, it wasn't the drunk teenager kind of trouble. It was the, oops, I accidentally broke the law to save downtown Musutafu, and now everybody has to sign another damn NDA kind of trouble. Kendo said it was a dance club. Oh no, that was tempting. They'd only had a handful of real proper dates, and the two of them had been dancing, which... Hitoshi hadn't expected to enjoy as much as he did. Izuku wouldn't know rhythm if it introduced itself, but he made up for it in infectious enthusiasm and flailing. Hitoshi couldn't feel self-conscious dancing next to him because he knew absolutely no one on the dance floor was going to be looking at him. By that same argument, though, there was no way Hitoshi was going to get on a dance floor by himself. Hitoshi gave him a look. Why are you trying to convince me to go? He asked. It's not going to be any fun unless you're there. Well... Izuku smiled at him and turned himself sideways in Hitoshi's lap so he could lay his cheek against Hitoshi's shoulder, which was just fighting dirty. Hitoshi had a hard enough time telling him no on a normal day. Turning his boyfriend down when he might be being cute and affectionate was just impossible. I might have tomorrow free. What? The whole day? He felt a spike of excitement at Izuku's nod. That was different. I can't remember the last time we had a day off at the same time. Not since before finals. Are you sure you want to hang out with my classmates? They're all freaks. Here I was, thinking you'd enjoy watching people make themselves look dumb. I do enjoy that now that you mention it, even though I already have three years of dirt on them, Hitoshi acknowledged. He wasn't going to miss the majority of his classmates, but 
There were a few he wouldn't mind seeing out of school as real people. I want the rest of the day, though. No errands, no helping a neighbor move, no looking for lost dogs, just me. Deal. Izuku caved way too easily, and Itoshi tipped him backwards to get a look at his expression. The brat was laughing at him. I took the whole day off just to spend some time with you, Izuku admitted. Mike's camera shutter went off again. Don't mind me, he said and grinned as he lined up another shot. You two just keep being cute. His second shot was of Itoshi blushing bright red, right as a candle, and Izuku still cradled in one arm as he covered his face with both hands, which did nothing to hide his bright red ears. All right, everyone, this will conclude the first part to Paper Agency. I will be back with part two of this for you all as soon as possible. I hope you all are enjoying it so far. I love Shindeku Fix. And as always, thank you all so much for listening.